G'day, welcome to Mount Cranber Apiculture. Just want to give a short talk today on just the basic setup you need to start a beehive. Um, it really concerns me sometimes that there is just so much information out there on the internet and everybody's pushing their own personal thing. I just wanted to get back to the very basics of what a beehive is and the very simple gear that you need to start. First thing you need to make sure is that you've got um, good PPE, personal protective equipment. Uh, bees do these things, there is a bit of a hazard there. Uh, um, beekeeping is supposed to be enjoyable though, so just make sure you do wear the correct PPE when you're handling bees. First thing you need is a good, good quality bee suit. This is the one I like. Um, I think the main prerequisites with them is just that um, You've got a nice tight fitting elastic around the wrist so the bees don't crawl up your, up your arms. A nice tight fitting elastic around the waist so they don't crawl up under your shirt. Some good pockets to put stuff in. They're also good, good robust zips that are going to pull up and stay up and not break. And a good robust um, veil on the top that you can see through easily that the bees can't get into. Also make sure that the zippers have got nice big um, pulls on them that you can get your fingers in and close them up. So that's a bee veil. Um, I like the half suits. Some people use the full suits. So I personally find them a bit of a pain to get into and out of. So I just like the half suits. A lot of people use gloves. I choose not to because I don't like them. If you use a pair of gloves, make sure that they're the good um, goat skin gloves. They fit your hands nice and tightly and they're not the fingers aren't too long for your fingers because it's really hard to pull frames out and, and um, handle a beehive when the, the fingers are inch too long for your fingers. Um, these are the gauntlet types with um, extra bits up the arms. So gloves, um, not necessary but a lot of beginners like to use them. And if you feel more comfortable working your beehive with gloves on, then by all means use them. A hive tool. This is the good old Aussie hive tool. The Americans call it the J tool for obvious reasons. Uh, they're designed to lever frames out of boxes um, and a nice sharp blade on it to scrape wax off. So you will need a hive tool. Last but not least, a good quality smoker. There are, there are lots of types of smokers around. This is a good old Bico, an Aussie made Bico smoker. Um, something like this should last you a lifetime if you're a hobby beekeeper. One good smoker will, will do you forever. Um, I'm sure the commercial guys wear a few out in their lifetime, but yeah, don't work bees without a smoker. It, it's, it's best practice and your beekeeping will be much more enjoyable if you use a smoker. Let's go on to the basic hive parts now. A lot of types of beehives out there now. Um, everyone's pushing that their hive is better and you should use their hive. I just want to go right back to the bare basics of what a normal old um, Langstroth beehive looks like. The first component is a bottom board. So it's just a sheet of masonite with some cleats on the bottom that sit on the ground. Rises on three sides, so they're 10 mil risers, 22 mil wide, same size as the width of your box. So this is just the basic footprint of your your box that will go on top of it or the super. So that's a bottom board. Um, once again, there's lots of different types, screened. Uh, you can have beetle tracks built into them, um, all sorts of other things. So that's the bare basics. That's all you need. Next component is a bee box, or for some strange reason, beekeepers call them supers. This is an eight frame full depth. It holds eight frames, sides are 22 mil thick, um, which is standard size for a bee box. And there's um, a um, rebate here to hold your frames. So a bee box or a super.
next thing in order is a quen excluder. You can choose to not use them, it's up to you. The quen excluder stops the queen from laying eggs in the honey supers. So, acts as a barrier. Uh, the workers can get through there and go up in the honey supers. But these um, gaps here are just too wide for the thorax of the queen to fit through. So, queen excluder, I recommend you get a metal one. Um, that initial extra cost is um, is better in the long term because they, they tend to last forever and they're, they're much more robust. So there's a plastic one there, a good quality plastic one, just as an example of the different types of queen excluders that are out there. You're going to need more than one super. You can see why this is called an eight frame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with a bit of space there for the edges. Um, once again, eight frame, full depth. And I'd recommend to start at one beehive, um, go for three supers, because you're probably going to need, um, if your bees are doing well, they'll, they'll fill two up with honey, no problem at all. These are frames, full depth, Langstroth frames. They come backpack in pieces. So you just nail them together, glue and nail them together. Really simple to do. And I'll do another video on that soon. This is what they look like put together. They're nice and solid, um, nailed and glued. I always like to write my um, brand on them. So they're identifiable as mine. You wire them up with some um, frame wire. I'll do another video on how to do that. And they all get a sheet of foundation. So that's wax foundation. It's got the honeycomb pattern embossed on it. And the bees build really quickly on that. And there's a sheet of foundation there. Better keep us tend to call it founder. But that's foundation. Top of all that goes a lid. This is a migratory lid. Nice hard um, galvanized iron lid, um, which you can paint white to help with um, heat reflection. Masonite lid inside, a rim around the outside, and some holes bored in the edges to provide ventilation with a screen over the top to stop the bees from getting out and other things from getting in. Migratory lid. Um, by far the most popular lid that's used in Australia. It's a good idea to strap it all together. This is um, the good old Aussie m -lock. Once again, an Aussie invention. Um, that goes around your hive. This strap's in place. And it all locks down and, and tightens up. So you can use an M lock if you like. That's what beekeepers use. The other alternative is just these good old um, um, straps that grip, grip with a ratchet. So they work just as well. And all you really need to do is hold the lid on. If you're not moving your hives around, if you're moving hives, M locks are the best thing. If you're not moving your hives, this will just keep it all together in case a cow or something rubs against it and knocks it over. Um, if you're in a nice secure yard, a brick on the lid is just as good. So that's what a hive looks like. That's, that's the bare basics, that's all you need. You go to the, script, the description in the bottom of the video, I'll leave um, a link to the blog that will go with this video. And I'll also leave some um, links to some of the better um, beekeeping supply companies around the place. The blog will go into the same information I've just given you, but it'll also list some prices and that sort of thing um, to give you a bit of an idea of the basic costs of, of getting into bees. Okay, hope that video was helpful.